happening. In economics news, the American drugs giant Fitz had tabled a final £55 a share offer for AstraZeneca last night, but warned that it would walk away from the £69 billion takeover if its British rival refused to engage. Fitz urged AstraZeneca shareholders to put pressure on the board to engage as it raised the level of its offer and increased the cash element from 33% to 45%. Fitzer revealed last night that AstraZeneca have rebuffed a £53.50 a share offer on Friday, which it said substantially undervalued the group. In property news, yesterday the Governor of the Bank of England, Mark Carney, warned that the government's help to buy scheme could distort the entire mortgage market and may have to be curbed. He said that the programme to help new homeowners to secure a mortgage with a deposit of as little as 5% may be encouraging a return to risky home loans. In personal finance news, the National Employment Savings Trust, NEST, has revealed that pension scare stories warning today's young adults are heading for a poverty-stricken old age are wide of the mark. The state-backed default pension fund for low and moderate earners argued that modest amounts of thrift and the new enhanced state pension and auto-enrolment rules will be enough to ensure that today's young adults will be able to achieve an annual pension income of more than £15,000 a year. Nests say that an annual income of 15000 is the tipping point at which pensioners regard themselves as financially comfortable. And finally, in recruitment news, Labour leader Ed Miliband will today announce plans to change the way the statutory minimum wage is determined. He will reveal that a future Labour government would base minimum wage on average hourly earnings and would attempt to reach the target over five years. He does not plan to reveal the final figure until after the general election.